All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the National ESL GamesCon qualifiers for North America. We're finally into stage three, and we got some exciting matches today. A lot of awesome players still alive in this tournament. Actually, eight players remain by the names of Idra, the Muslim, Suppy, Golden, Violet, Minigun, State. Oh, am I forgetting? And there's one. I'm forgetting one. Idra? Did I say Idra? Idra, the Muslim, Violet Killer. State, Golden, Suppy, Minigun. I don't know. The brackets are there somewhere. Perhaps someone will be so kind as to link, link the brackets in the chat. We got a best of five on our hands right now. Uh, I'll get the scoreboard up in just a second. In the top right hand location, we have the Red Protoss player Minigun from Team Complexity going up against the Terran player in the bottom left from Evil Geniuses. He is Ben Baker or the Muslim. Uh, hopefully, we'll have some co-casters as the day goes as the day goes along. But unfortunately, no one no one responded to my requests. Made me very sad. But it's okay. We'll be fine. Let me before the, before the game gets going too far. Let me get the scoreboard up and running so people aren't confused. Uh, it'll just take me a second. By the way, there is a stream delay today of three minutes, so if you're trying to acknowledge me and I, and I ignore you and you hate me for it, well, it's because I'm not really reading the chat right now. Um, and if I do respond, it will be three minutes in the future for you. Of course, if I type in the chat, it will be uh, momentarily, but if, if you hear me say anything, it's, it's three minutes in the past for you, basically. So that's what's going on here, but three minutes in the future because you're actually watching the stream. Um, hopefully that makes sense. But let me set up the scoreboard really quick again. Apologies. Oh, we already see the Muslim going for a very fast first guess. First guess, very interesting. Minigun does see this. Let me see the sub bar text. Oh yeah, there it is. Best of five. All of these are best of fives, and here's what's on the line. Four of these eight players will qualify for Germany. For GamesCon Germany, and of course, uh, four North American representatives. You might say, hey, there's two Koreans in the bracket, Violet and Golden. Well, I think they're currently living in North America, so they are eligible. The Muslim is one of those who's currently living in North America, so he is eligible, eligible even though he is from uh, the UK. He has one of those British accents, yeah? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, no, the Muslim's a great guy. Had a chance to hang out with him at the GESL. Ooh, the Muslim at the second racks here. Did Minigun spot this? No. And Minigun even led this, this this gas finish. So this is definitely going to be some two racks aggression here from the Muslim. Adding on a reactor to this barracks. I would imagine he's going to add on a tech lab to this one up here. And that's it. There it goes. So this is going to be some marine marauder pressure. And now the question is, is Minigun going to fast expand? Is he going to put down a nexus fairly soon? We'll have to see if he builds a stock. Well, he's going to build a stock no matter what. But now the question is, does he save up, save up money for additional gateways? A second, does he get a second gas? Or did, does he just go... For that natural expansion nexus. Probe coming back up here. Let's see what he can spot. Base is under the gas is currently being attacked by one lone marine. The probe. Oh my god, if he moved like an inch more to the left, he would have seen that tech lab on that barracks. A little bit unfortunate. Does see the reactor on the barracks in the main. So this looks like a one racks expand here from, from the Muslim. Uh, and Minigun, again, was so close to scouting uh, that barracks. So we'll have to see if this pays off for the Muslim. Minigun continuing to scout around. Sees the two marines. There! It's the runaway. Checking on the expansion again. How far is he gonna go? Oh my god! <laughs> he almost saw the Marauder too. Minigun is not gonna see any of this, but the Stalker coming forward now. And here's where Mini here is where the Muslim is gonna have to engage the Marauder, I feel like. He's gonna try to trap the Stalker, and that's exactly what the Muslim is doing. So now Minigun knows exactly what's going on, and he's gonna find out at the expense of a Stalker. Now, is that worth it, and how does he react? He does have a Nexus on the way, two additional gateways as well. So, three gateways in total, continuing to Kona Boost at 7 score, has two gas on the field, hasn't saturated the second one just yet, needs to get those units out right now. There is a probe in the middle of the map, gonna see the two Marauders and three Marines marching across. Only one Zealot to Minigun's name right now, he really needs that Stalker that, that he lost, so... Uh, this is definitely gonna be a tricky situation, a fourth gateway being added on to Minigun as well, very nice uh, build here from the Muslim, even pulling some SCVs. I love that decision. He's definitely going to go for, uh, going to try to force this Nexus to be cancelled. That's exactly what he, what he wants to have happen. Um, or even kill it. Now that it's finished, he, he wants to definitely kill it. And Minigun only has two sentries, a Zealot, and a Stalker. So this is going to be tough. 
I think this Nexus is dead. Sorry. Now, the question is, does Minigun just counter with 4-gate aggression? Or does he try to rebuild the Nexus? Minigun trying to poke down the ramp, but has to be careful. Trying to target down that SCV, but again, this is so much stuff from Muslim. Minigun caught completely off guard. More pot shots going down onto that bunker. Minigun just going completely down there. I'm going to try to engage. There's no force fields going down a Guardian Shield. There's one force field. Two more Zealots joining in on the fun. SCV's engaging as well, but the Muslim just has so much stuff. Minigun behind. 42 to 37 in that supply count, and the bunker is now finished. And how does Minigun hold this Nexus? I don't see how he does it. The Muslim's just going to charge with the Force fields going down there from Minigun. Two more stocks being worth in, but goodbye, sentries, because you are dead. Minigun pulling some probes here, trying to get a surround on these Marauders and Marines. One, st one Stalker being targeted down and killed. And now Minigun going to start losing a lot of probes. Nexus is still alive, but I don't think that's going to be alive for long. Marauder gets killed. Stalker on the high ground, trying to be as cost efficient as possible. But he's already dangerous low in health, down to 60 out of 80 in that health. And there goes the Nexus. To Muslim again behind this. Uh oh, no force fields. Okay, there is one force field. Minigun does use it. One Marauder gets killed. Two Marines remain there. Three Marines on the low ground as well, but... The Muslim is just too strong at this point. And again, he has a natural expansion going down behind this. That's definitely there, so... Um, you know, he's going to have a fine economy behind this. It's not like this is a one base all in, anything like that. Sure, he did lose some SCVs, but... Uh, he still has a decent amount, 25, and again, you have to consider, okay, he's going to be able to make two SCVs at a time, out of two orbital commands, and two mules at a time. Then you're going to come down the ramp and try to break this target down that bunker. There's no Marines, uh, there's no SCVs, I should say, to really repair this bunker, so he could be, he might be able to break it. Going to target fire that down, but, oh, no. There go the stalkers. Bunker does fall, but there's still so many Marines and a Marauder here. Minigun desperately trying to stay alive. Uh, but... Unfortunately, I think the Muslim ones. And there is the GG. The GHG. The GHG. And the Muslim is going to take a quick game number one. Very comfortably. Minigun was unable to scout that second barracks. And that's important. You gotta be able to scout that. Gotta be able to scout that. Um... Because if you don't scout it, guess what? You have no idea what's going on, and all of a sudden you're losing a stalker for free, and your opponent's marching across the map towards you. Um, yeah, so let's look at the bracket really quick. See if we have any updates. Let me see if I can show it on the screen. With technology. That's not it. That's not it. Hold on. No. Wrong button. Wrong button. There it is. Alright. So you can see the bracket here. These are all going to be best of fives. All these games are. Ha all these matches are happening right now. Violet is playing Golden. Minigun to Muslim. Killer is playing State. And Suppy is playing Idra. I think State is, uh, is streaming his point of view against Killer, so you can go watch that if you want. Have that on second monitor. Uh, Idra vs. Suppy. That's happening right now, ZVZ. Also, what's important to note, there is a Reddit thread right now um, about this tournament, so please uh, go upvote that. Go upvote that Reddit thread. Try to get some more attention to this tournament, attention to these North American players that are trying to qualify to represent the North Americans uh, at GamesCon. Now, we can look at the bracket. The winner of this round two match and this round two match will qualify. So once we get to round three, everyone's going to stop. Or those two players are done. They're done and they're qualified. So two of these four, or actually one of these four is going to qualify, and one of these four in these two spots, if that makes sense. Now there's a lower bracket, and it's kind of the same thing. Um, from round two, so basically you make it to round three, you qualify. See there's two slots here? So one of these two will qualify, and one of these two will qualify. So we're going to go from 8 to 4, if that makes sense. And those four uh, will qualify for GamesCon. So that's, what's, that's what we're looking forward to here. Again, please tell your friends this is going on. Link them to the... Uh, oops. Link them to the good old... The good old stream. And, uh, you know, there's a lot on the line here. A lot on the line. All these players really want to represent, uh, you know, the North Americans. But here we go. Game number two of this best of three.
Best of five, excuse me. And that's not going to work. Between in the, in the bottom left hand location, the red Protoss player Minigun representing Team Complexity. Currently down 0 1 to his opponent in the top right hand location, the blue Terran player Demuslim representing Team Evil Geniuses. Evil Geniuses versus Complexity. Demuslim. Not too many crazy, ridiculous results uh, recently. Same with Minigun, really. Uh, it's not like they've really, you know, gotten deep into a lot of big major land tournaments. Even though I feel like they both have the potential to. Very strong players. Um, but we'll see. Minigun, of course, on the top of the ladder. Demuslim, I know he has a he has a Smurf account. That So he doesn't ladder as much on the Demuslim account, but he does have a Smurf account that he ladders on a bunch. Um, and I'm wondering what these two players are going to do. I mean, we saw the Muslim in game number one. Again, this is a best of five. This is a best of five. Every single match today you will see is going to be a best of five. So uh, I kind of like that. Eight player tournament, why not make it all best of five, in my opinion? Especially when so much is on the line. But yeah, the Muslim went for the two racks play early on, and he hid the second barracks. Minigun didn't have a chance to check the replay, but I'm sure he knew. Like, once the Stalker came forward and saw the two Mirage come from the north, he absolutely knew there was a barracks up there with a the tech lab on it. Um, and his probe, again, was like a centimeter away from scouting that. So, you know, you think to yourself, okay, what if he scouts that? You know, how does he prepare differently? First of all, he's not going to lose that Stalker. You know, he might poke that Stalker forward a little bit, but he's not going to lose the Marauders. Ooh, and look at Muslim putting his first tracks on the low ground. So yeah, I'm not surprised at all. Minigun's going to scout a little bit harder this time. He's going to make sure nothing gets by him, because that's what happened in the last game, and he paid for it. Uh, what else could he have done? Corona boosts his gateways, gets some units out on the field, uh, position his sentries in a place where he can kind of block off uh, the, Muslim attack, the Muslim attack, maybe add on a, another, another gateway a little bit earlier. Maybe pull probes a little bit earlier. Um, not let that bunker go up, but once that bunker finished, I mean, that, that Nexus was pretty much doomed. Minigun tried his hardest. He, he made do with what he had to fend off that aggression, but it just wasn't enough. So in this game, yeah, not surprised at all to see Minigun really scouting around for those barracks, for those barracks shenanigans. Scouted the, the fact that his opponent had no gas in his main base, so Minigun probably knows that his opponent is going for that fast command center. However, you know, there is proxy racks play to consider, so I'm a little bit surprised he didn't really see that command center being made but he could have he could have counted the SCVs and pretty much knew his opponent is going for a gasless fast expand now knowing this how does minigun react a lot of Paradox players like just not building anything out of their gateway not researching anything and just saving up for the minerals for the nexus it's exactly what minigun is going to do so the muslim now he's up 1-0 in this best of five what's going through his mind very comfortable play. Like in game one, he went for a strategy that okay, if his opponent pro if, if if his opponent scouts what he's doing, and then plays a little bit more economically, but you know not not overly economically, so that he can still defend the push, but putting himself ahead. I mean, it was definitely a risk what the Muslim did there, going for that proxy two rank, not proxy two racks, but hiding the second rank. So there's definitely a little bit of a risk there, investing a lot into that early aggression that you know, is not necessarily guaranteed it to do damage because your opponent can easily scout it. So there's definitely a risk involved there. Um, but he has to be feeling comfortable right now. Up 1-0, I would expect to see a standard macro game from him. Now that he has that 1-0 that lead, now that he's feeling comfortable, he's like, all right, I'm, I'm up 1-0, I can lose a game here and there. Um, you know, I'm in a very comfortable situation. I'm two game, I'm two wins away from uh, advancing to the next round. I feel like he can, you know, he can afford to play a little bit more macro oriented. Not necessarily go for any type of heavy, heavy early pressure. Risky, one might say. And we see three racks on the field from Muslim. Fairly standard play, two gases as well. Once we see 100 gas, let's see, it is a reactor. So once we see 100 gas, we should see the factory going down, I would expect. I would expect. Oh no, he is making a tech lab, so he might save the gas for, you know, a potential stim. And adding on another reactor. So he might just, uh, you know, be saving up the gas for combat shields, concussive shells, or stim. Probably stem out of this tech lab, I would imagine. Uh, and yeah, there it is. And this tech lab, I would expect to see. Oh no, it's a reactor. So now I would expect the next hundred gas to be spent on a factory. So we'll look out for that. Again, going for that standard marine marauder medevac play early on in this game. Many gun, meanwhile, finishing up three gateways. Not necessarily doing any aggression with this. He doesn't have a forward pylon on the field, so it's not like he has the ability to do that forward uh, that forward aggression. His opponent only has two bunkers, so you could say. All right, if he had perfect micro, three gate aggression, chrono boosted gateways, a lot of warp and cycles, that could potentially do a lot of damage. 
But then again, electing not to do that, instead going for the faster robotics facility. We'll have to see what he does for this. Does he go for a faster robotics bay? And that's exactly what's going to happen. So, Minigun going to go for the uh, faster Colossi at this point in time. Not a terrible strategy. The, the problem, the big issue with that is, and going for this, this, this fast Colossi, is if your opponent is really mobile, it can be scary to deal with. If your opponent is dropping everywhere and you only have Colossi on the field, you're not going to have... Look, it's based on how fast these Colossi get out. Because he's getting such fast such fast Colossi, he's not necessarily going to have the biggest ground gateway composition army. Only three centuries you see right now. Whereas if he had delayed the Colossi a little bit, maybe put down a Forge first or a Twilight Council or something like that, he's really investing a lot into the gateway units early on, which is, you know, better against the high mobility of the Terran race of heavy drop lane. Oh my gosh, he's actually going for a Warpism. He's actually going for Warpism. Very interesting. Um, I would expect him still to get Thermal, right? I mean, the Robotics Bay is done. Okay, he's going to build the Colossae right after that. So, getting a Warpism on the field. He might just be trying to buy himself time. Because the thing with going Colossae, if you, your opponent has a timing. If you're rushing for those Colossae, your opponent definitely has a timing where they can push and they can do a lot of damage because your Colossae aren't, aren't out yet. Or you don't have a lot of them. Or you don't have the strong gateway composition underneath them. And that's a time that's very scary for the Protoss. And you bet uh, the Terran is going to try to exploit that if you can identify it. Now, the Warp Prism, it could serve as a time saver for the Protoss. Okay, let's warp in some stuff into my opponent's main base, causing my Terran opponents not only to be scared of a potential attack, but to retreat a majority of his army to fend off this Warp Prism play. Thus, giving the Protoss player time. Because if the Terran player moves back their army, guess what? They're not attacking the Protoss, which means the Protoss has time to get out those Colossi uh, in order to adequately defend against any potential attack from the Terran. He's not going to scout that, is he? Oh my god, he's so close to scouting that war prison. <laughs> oh, wow! Minigun could scout this so easily. We'll have to keep an eye on that. But the Muslim coming across the map here. Minigun has plenty to deal with. All those sentry stalkers and that Colossus. Oh, goodbye, Observer. And Minigun going to try to engage here. Stimming up is the Muslim trying to split up his units. But nice force fields there from Minigun. That's exactly what you have to do. And now the Muslim is on the retreat. Again, the Muslim has two uh, two command centers on the field or on the way. We have a pile and an approach. Did he scout that command center? No, he hasn't scouted that yet. He's so close. That's like the story of the series for Minigun right now. So close to scouting this stuff, but just not able to. The Muslim trying to split up against Stimming Forge. Needs to target down that Colossi. Nice force fields once again there from Minigun. Very good control. Uh, the Muslim though doing a good job trying to bait down those force fields. And not losing too much of his army. Now, his medevacs are going to heal up these marines and marauders, and the Muslim is going to be just fine for now. War Prism now on its way. Oh, he I did see Command Center. He did see it. And Minigun is going to do a lot of aggression here. He has a War Prism going into the main base. How many gateways? One, two, three, four, five. That's a good six gateways. So Minigun definitely going to invest a lot into this aggression. He's definitely going to try to kill the Muslim. Four Zealots being dropped into the main base. The Muslim now is forced with the decision, okay, how do I split up my army? I have to defend against this drop. I also have to defend against this push coming forward from Minigun. There's two Colossi here. A lot of Vikings on the way here for the Muslim. Does Minigun have enough to break the Muslim right here, right now? Gateway unit still doing a lot of damage in the main base. The Muslim sending most of his army into the main. And oh no, so many SCVs falling here for the Muslim. This whole overlook command will have to be lifted and retreated back. But he's just going to, I think that Orville's going to die actually. In fact, it is. So, the units were finally cleaned up. The War Prism is still alive. Warping in more and more uh, reinforcements. The Muslim still has his space in the top left. Minigun setting a stalker over there to try to deal with that. Now, at what point does Minigun back up, take his third? And the Muslim has to be a little bit upset by this. His command center was scouted. And he's going to have to lift this off as soon as it becomes an Orbital Command. But can you really hide it? I don't know if there's anywhere you can hide it. Can you hide it back there? I, th I still think a stalker can hit it. Maybe in the in the deep left hand corner. I'm not sure. But minigun, mission accomplished. He's gonna back up and take down this factory in preparation of taking his third. He's up 132 to 97 in that supply count. And there goes the third. So minigun playing this nice and safe. Keep in mind, the Muslim lost that orbital command. Has rebuilt a new one already. That might have been building in his main. Orbital being sent back to the Muslim side of the map, but is Minigun going to let this happen? I wouldn't. 
The Muslim knows this, though. The Muslim knows that Minigun is like, alright. Minigun's gonna try to keep this orbital from returning home, so I'm gonna put my army in a position to engage this optimally, and another engagement gonna happen here. Minigun coming forward, throwing down the force fields. Nice stim there from the Muslim, splitting up his units very nicely. Are there enough Vikings in the air? Oh my god, the War Prism was actually killed by the Vikings, but that's a DPS from the Vikings onto the War Prism and not onto the Colossi. How much is that gonna cost the Muslim? It looks like a lot. Minigun up 110 to 67 in that supply count. And Minigun is going to clean up the Muslim, and we're going to go to a game number three. These two guys are going to be tied one to one. One to one in this best of five. Game three coming up. Game three coming up. Coming right up. Well played uh, by Minigun. We'll talk a little bit about it in the next game. Let me message my admin to make sure he's not playing commercials during the game. Hello everyone and welcome back to the IEM Games Con uh, qualifiers for the North American region. We're in round one of an eight person bracket. These are two of the players. In the bottom right hand location we have the Red Protoss player from Team Complexity. His name is Chad Jones or Minigun. He's currently tied 1-1 with his opponent in the top left hand location. The Blue Terran player De Muslim from Team Evil Geniuses. We are running, uh, we are live right now with a three minute stream delay. So I'm gonna type test123 in the chat. So right now you're looking at the chat and you're seeing test123, but you're not understanding what I'm talking about necessarily. But you'll realize that three minutes from now when you're like, oh, so that's why he wrote test123. So I'm trying to give you an idea of the stream delay. So once you hear me referring to it, you can think, of, you can think about when I actually typed in test123 and be like, oh, so that's when he typed it. And then you can know how far ahead I am, uh, how far in the future I am uh, of you. So again, if you if you try to acknowledge me in the chat, um, I'm three minutes in the future, so you won't hear it until three minutes from when you type. I don't want anyone get offended by that. Um, trying to ensure, ensure uh, the most fairness possible in this tournament. I would also like to remind you guys to please tell your friends that this is going. I didn't even tweet. Oh my gosh, what a crime! I'm actually going to tweet right now. I'm actually going to tweet right now. Hold on. All right, casting the NA call virus from Gamescom. Hold on, I got a tweet. I got a tweet. I got a tweet. Nothing too exciting is happening. I promise. Oh my gosh, what am I looking for? Okay, there it is. National underscore ESL1. Is that it? I hope that's it. I hope that's it. Like, my mind is completely blank. Okay, I think it is. Alright, I tweeted. Everyone go retweet it. Yeah, 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 go retweet. Uh, I did tweet about this event. So, go retweet. If you're not following me on Twitter, I'm at AxelToss. Of course, there is a Reddit thread, at, uh, a Reddit thread as well. So, be sure to go upload that. And I'm not going to promise anything at a certain viewer count because that was a mistake yesterday. I, under I underestimated the power of Reddit and how much they want to see casters abused by their own rules. Of course, if you missed that, the VOD... <laughs> yes, the VOD is on YouTube. It's on my YouTube channel. You can go check that out. But here we are in game three of a best of five between spawning in the bottom right hand location. I already introduced them, didn't I? Yes, I did. I got distracted by the fact that I was tweeting. And look at this, I'm not surprised by this at all. Again, both these players going for macro games. Putting down their, their natural expansions very early on. 
And I guess we can talk about game one a little bit. Yes, we can. I feel like the muzzle might have overextended a little bit. Maybe caught a little bit off guard by the speed at which the Colossi came out from Minigun. Also, the Muslim was focusing a lot on his economy in the mid-game there, which left him open to a push from Minigun. If you notice, the Muslim had like, I think it was three or four command centers on the field at one point. Minigun was only on two Nexi and had about six gateways in a row producing Colossi. Minigun was investing a lot into his ground army and aggression. Let me look at the chat, hold on. Oops. Um, the Muslim wasn't doing that. The Muslim was investing a lot into his economy. Okay, yes, my chat is, is very lively now. Very confused about the fact that I'm in the future. But yeah, so so Minigun had a timing where he wasn't investing as much into his economy as his opponent, and the Muslim paid for it. Minigun also incorporated the Warp Prism. I love that too. Uh, again, for people asking in the chat, we are live right now on the North American server with a three minute stream delay. I see uh, Panther S uh, CSG asking that in the chat. Anyone else? Yes. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So hopefully that, that's not too confusing. But but yeah, a pretty even, uh, pretty interesting series, I should say. That wasn't going for... Gosh, the really early aggression in game one, and it paid off because uh, Minigun wasn't able to scout it. And then the Muslim taking the economic route throughout the entire game number two, and Minigun took advantage of that. So, let's see what's going to happen here. Let's look at their builds really quick. The Muslim starting upgrades right away. Factory all, all already done. Uh, starting the starport, there's a reactor going as well. Only two racks on the field. So really investing a decent amount into tech and into upgrades. Meanwhile, Minigun already has a robo on the field. Ooh, adding on two forges. A little bit of a, diff a, little bit of a, a change to last game. So Minigun really going to be focusing on the upgrades. However, plus one is already halfway done for the Muslim. So he could be just fine in that regard. Um, as far as upgrades are concerned. Considering Minigun's going for these fast two forges. Let's pretend the Muslim had three racks on the field. And the reactor in the, in the factory in the starport. And didn't build an engineering bay. Then I'd be like, oh my god, okay, Demuslim, I'm a little bit scared for you because your opponent is going for the double forge. But Demuslim already has the engineering bay on the field, already uh, 90 per about 70% of the way done on that plus one research. So the way it should time out is he's going to start plus one right away, plus one armor. And that's going to finish just behind um, just behind these the 1-1 the one -one out of the Protoss. So will Minigun have a timing there? Probably not. I don't expect him to. The question is, as the upgrades go along, because look, Twilight Council is already on the way for Minigun, he can start 2-2 right away. And that's when it's going to be scary, if the Muslim uh, refuses to add on a second, second engineering bay. The Muslim adding on three additional racks right here, that's five racks in total. I think Minigun's going to see all of this. Look at his vision. Okay, he's seen two racks, another one being added on, saw the engineering bay. Ooh, he's supply blocked. But he's three pylons about to finish. Um, sees the starport with the reactor, sees the double gas at his bonus natural expansion. But the Muslim's going to do a little bit of a push here. Marines and Marauders, two men of X, uh, marching across the map. Minigun has three sentries, a lot of stock. Pressure. Think about this map, it's very easy to hold your natural expansion. Two force field ramp. Uh, make sure you keep your stalkers uh, wary of drops. Good Terrans will be uh, spreading you apart a lot. And you can't lose that. Not the best force fields there from Minigun, a little bit sloppy. There's actually a crack in there as well. And Minigun's used a lot of force fields there. 1-1 one, one is about to finish though, Blink about to finish as well. Or actually Blink about halfway complete. So, Muslim coming up the ramp again. Ooh, targeting down those sentries. Minigun has to be extremely careful here, but he's doing just fine so far. I think he lost his sentry though. Units lost shows ew 750 to 425 from Minigun. So Muslim very happy with how things are going right now. Again, has a third going down behind this. Adding on a second engineer bay and the army, so we'll be able to start 2-2 right when that uh, armor finishes. But we have 2-2 on the way from Minigun. I'm wondering if the Muslim clicked on one of Minigun's units to see that fact. The Muslim coming forward once again. Stimming up the ramp, and two force fields going down. Two Marauders and a Marine going to be trapped. And the Muslim definitely can click on these units. And Meninga continuing with the force fields. One Marauder feeling extremely awkward. Let me out of here. Oh, I'm just going to be lifted up into the medevac. Medevac's like, I'll save you. Alright. More Zealots being added on here for Minigun. 
And now he's going to leave his ramp and go right for the watchtower. Tutu's only halfway done, but Blink is about to finish. So it's not like this is a timing push by any means. Maybe just trying to scare his opponent a little. Oops. Terrible. Terrible. Um, camera control. By the way, people asking about the mustard. I did do it yesterday. Um, and it's on my YouTube channel. I don't know why the far side is linking the, the Twitch VOD. Go watch the YouTube video of it. It's much more clean, I promise. It is pretty good. Mustard is delicious. If we get to a thousand viewers today, we have to have a new challenge, don't we? The Muslim. Coming across the field here, that's a lot of Marines and Marauders. The factory is blocking the third of Minigun. Behind this, the Muslim has a third of his own already up. Colossi in production. Here for Minigun. This pylon is going to get taken out. Minigun is not going to be supply blocked, though. Muslim scanning, trying to see what's up. Charge is about 10% oh, of the way done. Ooh. Minigun thought about trying to take his opponent off guard. Alright. This factory will die. And Minigun is going to take his third right away. Very macro-oriented game here. No one really investing a lot into terrible scary aggression. Uh, again, the Muslim going for that third. Minigun going for that third. So we're going to see some late game. A late game here. By the way, score update. 3-0 Violet over Golden. Of course, y'all knew that three minutes ago. But I'm just now reading that in the chat. But I knew it at the same time you did, except you don't think I can because I'm in the future and I don't know, I'm confused. You're not going to hear me say that until three minutes, so you're going to think, oh my god, we already know that. Why are you saying that? Because I already read it in the chat. But for the people who are not reading the chat, Golden lost to Violet 3 -0. Yes, that's what happened. So, the Muslim up 175 to 156 in that supply upgrade show Minigun at 2 2. 3-3 three, three is about halfway complete. The Muslim starting plus 3 upgrades on his weapons. He is 2-1 in favor of that weapons upgrade. Plus 2 armor about to finish. 3 more racks on the way. Ghost Academy on the way. Ghost Academy, same timing as the Temple Archives. These guys know how to play this game. The Muslim advancing towards his opponent's third, trying to get some pot shots onto the Metamax. Ooh! Minigun with an aggressive blink there. He's going to try to engage his horse skills going down. The Muslim has so much stuff though. Uh, and Minigun, 3-3 uh, three, three is not yet done, but will he have enough? The Muslim well ahead in supply, 159 to 103, and now Minigun is on the run. One Colossus is on the way, more force fields are going to go down for Minigun, but this is so much stuff for the Muslim. And that's it. GG. That ended so fast. Some might say that escalated quickly. The Muslim going to take game number two, game number three, I should say. Excuse me. So the Muslim is now one win away from advancing to the next round. Again, this is a best of five. Waiting on the invite. Again, if you want a bracket update, um, I can do it now. Fine, I'll do it now. You're right. I'll do it now. I'm sorry. Here, let's see. Does that work? Um, the bracket can be found right here. So memorize this and then type it in your browser. Memorize that and type it in your browser. Violet 3 over Golden. We'll play the winner of this series. I'm just kidding. I'll link it. <laughs> Where's my chat? Say hi to yourselves. Say hi. There's the link. You'll understand in you'll understand in three minutes. I like I'm confused with myself. All right, countdown. There it goes. Uh, let's probably go back into the game. It'd probably be, probably be a good idea. These guys retaining their colors throughout the series. That doesn't have a lot. That doesn't happen a lot in these tournaments. 
uh, players actually retain their colors, but of course my scoreboard is completely flipped. Is that worth adjusting? <sighs> I think it is. Hold on, guys. I'm so sorry. I apologize. So minigun will be down. 2-1 tin muzzle. Yes? Are we good? Is that good? I think we're good. Alright guys, welcome back to the IEM Games Con qualifiers for the North American server. Top four from this eight-man tournament will advance to GamesCon to represent North Americas. In the bottom left-hand location, we have the Red Protoss player, Complexity Minigun. His opponent in the top right-hand location, it's the blue Terran player, the Muslim. This is a double, a double elimination bracket. So if Minigun loses here, he can still fight his way through the loser's bracket and advance to Gamescom. But of course, ideally you want to win here. We are live on the North American server. We are live on the North American server right now. We're live. I can chat and these guys will see it. But there is a three minute stream delay. There's a three-minute stream delay to ensure fairness. Sure, everyone could be trustworthy, but, you know, uh, one of the players requested the stream delay. Not necessarily in this game, but I'm not going to say, no, I'm not going to put on a stream delay. Because we're trying to be fair. We're trying to be fair. We're trying to be fair. Everyone is confused in the chat on what live means. These aren't replays. This is... Look, do you want me to move... Here, I'll move this. Look, see, it's not a replay. We're live. I've been showing the lobby, and y'all have been hearing the countdowns. Let me put that back where it was. Alright, so Minigun must win here. Minigun must win if he wants to stay alive in the series. The Muslim one win away from advancing to the next round. Let's talk about the last game. The last game. The Muslim was just able to macro super hard and hit a great timing. Um, that reminds me of the Microsoft slogan in the uh, After Hours Game League. It's Microsoft macro hard. It's a pretty good. It's a pretty good slogan. Um, anyway, yeah, the Muslim got his third well before his opponent. His upgrades were fine throughout the entire game. It's not like he invested a lot into his early barracks play. You know, he had his factory down, had his engineering bay, had his ghost academy going. Uh, got his third, I think the third was the most important part. He got that down really fast, was able to delay Minigun's third for a while, was able to apply a lot of pressure into his opponent's natural expansion. The Muslim, I mean, uh, Minigun, I should say, perhaps not with the best control. You could theorize, okay, what if he just force fielded that choke and just not let the Muslim through? You know, would that allow for enough time for Minigun to get another Colossus on the field? And would that have been enough to defend against that aggression from the Muslim? I could talk about that all day long. Um, but ultimately, the Muslim, you know, outplaying Minigun a little in that game. And he's going to be up 2 1 in this series. Could have been a map dependent strategy on Ohana. A very easy two bases to hold. You know, to invest in as much into bunkers and stuff. Because you're on high ground, there's only a, it's a very narrow ramp. So the Muslim might have cut a little bit more corners than he usually would have on a map like, say, Daybreak, which we're on right now. But we see the Muslim going up to two barracks, adding on two gas as well. We're going to see Stim out of this tech lab. No third racks, though. So I feel like we're going to see a relatively fast factory with the next 100 gas. Can't think of what else it would be used for. There's 100 gas, and we're about to see the SCV move out to make a factory. There it is. Wow, minigun. I saw him do this against someone. Who was it? Who was it? Who remembers? Where's my chat? Who was it? Who was it? Oh, it was a PVT. It was this tournament. It wasn't today, though. I think it was, uh... I think it was the first. I think it was the first uh, stage. This is this is a three-stage tournament, by the way. Um, I think it was the first stage. I want to say. <laughs> the 
the chat is making me laugh. Of course, you're gonna hear me laughing three minutes from now, so you're not gonna know what I'm laughing at unless you scroll up to three minutes ago. Anyway. Oh, it wasn't. I'm trying to remember. I can't remember. Um, but this is a pretty cool build. You get a really fast third nexus. Of course, you don't want your opponent scouting it, which is why Minigun has a probe over here looking for that SCV. I'm a little bit surprised that Muslim doesn't have an SCV on the map. I'm actually very surprised by that. And he hasn't lost one. Where is your SCV? I, f I feel really strongly that Terrans need to be consistently scouting uh, with that SCV across the map. And this is something you kind of have to see. Minigun gonna get this third on the ground, no problemo. Robo on the field, how many gateways? Seven gateways. So we could see Minigun trying to do a lot of damage here, and to Demuslim it could look like a two base timing push here. Like a like a seven gate off two base, or six gate off of two base. He, he won't necessarily know that his opponent has a third base, which is why, again, it's so important as a Terran player to have an SCV constantly trying to scout, or scanning. I mean... But as a Terran player, you don't want to use your scans. You want to, if you can get intel with an SCV, you sure as hell are you're going to try to get that intel with that SCV rather than uh, wasting a scan that could be used for a mule and get you more money. Because who doesn't like money? Who doesn't like money? Except people who work in esports. Or people, or casters. Not all casters. Casters who aren't top tier. Maybe. I don't even know what I'm talking about, but the Muslim going to the Watchtower. And this is scary. Hey, I just met you and this is scary. The Muslim's going across the map. Minigun might trap him, maybe. Let's see. Because Minigun has a lot of gateways on the field. He's definitely intending to do a lot of aggression here, I feel like. It would make sense. Because he's a lot of gateway units. You know, th these units could be for defense, but I mean... Again, I, was, I would almost try to be aggressive just to freak out my opponent. But look at that! The third is already done, and, and Demuslim's like, oh my gosh. How long has that been up? Demuslim is asking himself. Might be clicking on the minerals. They start with 1500, he sees 1300, he's like, oh dear. That's been up. Hold on. I put myself on busy. That's been up a long time. That's nah, been up a long time. Minigun up 120. Look at the supply. 126 to 97. And how does the Muslim punish this? Because Minigun already up in supply. The timing to punish this was a long time ago. This expansion has already paid for itself. And then some. Two Marines stemming forward here, though. Gonna try to do a little bit of aggression. All Minigun has to do is, is, is warp in some units over here. Losing one probe, though. It's a little bit concerning. Another probe. Another probe. The Muslim scanning. Trying to see what's up. Minigun do the exact same thing as the Muslim, kinda. Setting two Zelts as opponent's third. Relative to the two Marines sent to Minigun's third. And Minigun is just gonna play this standard. It's very interesting. I feel like he definitely had a timing uh, to do a lot of aggression towards his opponent. So, But it's all good. He's just gonna try to keep his macro lead. Already has some Templars on the field. Just gonna play a little bit defensively. Which is kind of tricky on Daybreak because drops can be very annoying to deal with. There's a lot of airspace. Oh no. I don't know if I would have put my two forges here. Imagine a drop right here. And those are dead. Uh, but there's a cannon being placed down for Minigun so he's aware of the fact that, that these forges could potentially be exposed. But yeah, I mean the first is a long way away from the third. So you could see a situation where, okay, the Terran player stims and tries to do some aggression towards the third base. At the same time dropping to the main base. Trying to spread out the Protoss opponent. But uh, as long as the Protoss is like on top of spreading his units and not over-investing into defenses in a certain location, leaving himself vulnerable to another location, I mean, it's fine. But we'll see. The Muslim getting his third base up and running, ready to go. 2-2 two -two on the way. 1-1 one -one already finished. Well ahead of Minigun in that regard. That regard. Minigun with 1-1 one -one only halfway done, but he does have Storm about 70% of the way done. Starting a warp prism out of his robotics facility. I think he has charge already. I would bet you a bowl of mustard that he has charge researched. He does. Now you must all eat a bowl of mustard. I don't make the rules, it's just the way it goes. Alright. So. The Muslim. Sending a medevac to the bottom side of the map. 
filled with three Marauders and two Marines. Oh, I like that. Minigun trying to trying to hide his High Templar. Uh, ooh, feedback and that's dead. Feedback and that's dead! Feedback and it's dead! Oh, and it's dead! Nice feedback there from Minigun. And that drop is going to fail. That drop is going to fail. Alright, Minigun now proceeding across the map. Lots of Zealots, Stalkers, Sentries, Archons, and I Templars in the mix. But, the Muslim does have Mobius Reactor Research. Six Ghosts on the way. So some good EMPs. Some good EMPs in this army is going to be worthless. It's going to be absolutely worthless. No Force Fields, no I Templar Energy, Archons don't have Energy, or Archons don't have Shields. But Minigun's going to go for it anyway, and the Muslim just has to play this safe. Ghost coming forward. Oh, Minigun. Nice EMP there from the Muslim. Minigun is maxed, 195 over 2. Actually, he's essentially maxed, I should say. Perhaps saving some supply for defending against drops. Cannon going down from Minigun. I kind of like that. We have a robotics, a second robotics facility on the way. A robotics bay just finished, so we could see a Colossi transition fairly soon. Now, the Muslim doesn't have any Vikings on the field, so he's been really on top of identifying what his opponent's unit composition is. You're like, okay, he doesn't have many Colossi, so I don't, I don't really have to worry about making Vikings. That being said, making one of them. Now, as his economy gets better, yeah, okay, he does have two starports with two reactors on him. I really like that decision. Making the Viking just to kill the Swarp Prism, so definitely saw that. I'm mean, going definitely looking to use that. Might try to trade relatively cost efficiently while dropping into his opponent's main base. That could be a good decision. I don't see a Dark Shrine in that production tab, and I don't think there's one made. Minigun still at 1 1. His opponent is at 2 2 with plus 3 weapons being researched. Plus 3 armor should start relatively soon. Yep, there's plus 3 armor. Nice feedbacks there on those ghosts. The Muslim caught a little bit off guard. Ghost coming forward here from Minigun. Minigun going for it. Oh, High Templar gets sniped away. Another High Templar coming forward. Nice storm there. Onto the army of the Muslim, and Minigun immediately going to back away after doing that. Two Colossi going to join in on the fun fairly soon. War Prism going to get killed by that Viking. Sad face for the War Prism. Sad face. There it goes. Alright. Minigun retreating for some reason. Not sure why. Because I feel like something Minigun could have done there is just try to prevent his opponent from taking a fourth. Does that make sense? Like, if he can deny his opponent's fourth for a very long time. It's obviously a really Oh my god, he EMP'd the Observer. Good spot there from the Muslim. Uh, but now the Muslim's going to be able to get a fourth on the field. And I feel like Minigun might have been in a position to potentially deny that. Stalker's going up to take care of this factory, but changing their minds as, as he realizes that, okay, the Muslim's going to be aggressive. A lot of ghosts on the field here for the Muslim. Another War Prism on the way for Minigun. Also, the Dark Shrine is about to finish. 3-3, three, three, halfway done for both these players. And we have a nuclear missile being researched for the Muslim being researched. Big engagement going to happen here. Storm going down from Miniguns. EMP is going down on a lot of the sentries. A lot of the Protoss army. Miniguns still has some... Uh, oh no, those High Templars don't have enough energy for high, for uh, for Storm yet. And... Oh, finally get enough energy. Laying down the Storms onto that Marine Marauder army. But does the Muslim just have too much here? 154 to 113 is that supply count. Miniguns just going to abandon, abandon his base. Not the best engagement at all there for Minigun. He's banking a lot of minerals though. Banking a lot of minerals. But the Muslim with the with the with the great engagement there. Nuclear missile is on the way. I don't know if there's an observer hit there. I don't think there is. The Muslim just trying to have some fun. And the nuke gonna go down, it's gonna kill an Archon, maybe. Oh, did it die? Aw, oh, it died. Mini gun. Why are you killing the ghosts that are nuking you? Uh, but yeah, I think the Muslim has this in the bag. I don't know what what, uh, what Minigun can do here. He's going to try to attack with these charge lots. 3-3 three, three is about to finish, but the Muslim already has 3-3 three, three completed. DTs being mixed in. I would imagine the Muslim has some uh, scans ready to be utilized. And it looks like the Muslim going to advance to the next round to play Violet. Ooh, that should be tasty. That should be incredibly tasty. Another scan going down from the Muslim. 
now with 175 to 151 minigun trying to scramble an army together. A scan going down so the DTs are visible. The Muslim is just gonna stim and split up his army, targeting down those Colossi. The Muslim up 166 to 113 supply. Mules going down, saying, Minigun, get out of the game, man. I won. And Minigun will fall to the lower bracket, unfortunately for him. But fortunately for him, he's not out of the tournament yet. This is an eight person double elimination bracket. Oops. Oopsie daisy. Minigun. Looks like he eventually might clean this up. And... He's trying. He's fighting his hardest, and I don't blame him at all. But the Muslim just can continue to reinforce across the map. Has five bases down. Another scan. And... Minigun trying to make it work. Has an arc on the Colossus and two Stalkers. Warping in more and more. His bank is now... Uh, is pretty dry now. And again, he's only on three bases. Mule's even mining from uh, from this expansion, but they're gonna get killed. So is there a way back for Minigun? I've seen some crazy things happen in StarCraft 2, uh, but if Minigun can manage a comeback here, that might be the craziest thing. That might be the craziest thing, but we'll see. Minigun trying to retake that fourth base, does not want to give up, I don't blame him. Two more Colossus finally being added onto the field uh, for Minigun. The Muslim collecting his army in the middle of the map. So many Marauders there. Three Ghosts. Some Metamax as well. This command center is terrified to land for some reason. And the Muslim throwing down all of his mules at this base and in the middle of the map. Minigun is going to try to make something happen here. Storm is able to be used. The Muslim trying to get those EMPs down. Not hitting too much though. Minigun has his high tempo. Storm's going down here from Minigun and... Does he have enough? Can he do it? There are only two Vikings here remaining, but... The Muslim going to stim ahead and... Minigun trying to equalize that supply. But it's so difficult. This Archon is incredibly brave. Okay, he's finally gonna back away. He's like, alright, never mind. Never mind, I was kidding. It was a joke. He was just trying to fix the paint on that orbital. That's all he was doing. That's all he was doing. So Minigun slowly but surely closing the supply lead. It's now 130 to 121. During that engagement, the supply was actually even. So I gotta. My mind is like hurting a little bit from trying to consider what's going on here. Um, if Minigun can somehow come back, that would be insane. DT here at the fifth of the Muslim, cleaning up two Marines, but the Stim does go down and that Marauders are just going to kite away, and that Dark Templar will die. Planetary Fortress being made, and let's see what happens here. If Okay, if if the Muslim doesn't get EMPs on these high Templars, that's where I can see Minigun, you know, having a way to come back here. But as long as the Muslim is on top of his EMPs, I feel like he should be fine. In that last um in that last engagement, the EMPs weren't incredible from the Muslim by any means. No, they weren't. Uh, Minigun did a good job of dodging them. It kind of reminds me of Stalkers dodging fungals, like blinking out of the way just in time. It's kind of what Minigun was doing, trying to dodge those EMPs. And it was decently effective. We saw in that last mat, that last engagement, Minigun didn't die. Minigun getting this fourth up on the field too, and this, this fifth is going down at the top left. So is he just going to play defensive? Is that his plan? Let's look at the nuke count. The Muslim, you make your nuke. Did he make it? Does that mean he made it? I don't know. Look at the ghost. No, he needs to remake a nuke. Right now, the Muslim do it. I know you want to. Wait for it. Wait for it in that production tab. The Muslim of 178 to 163. Is he going to try to push when he's maxed? Minigun needs to split up his entire army. Split up his like, Templars. Dodge those EMPs. 
keep your observer alive. Does the Muslim have cloak? Okay, he does have cloak. So what we could see the Muslim try to do is scan his opponent's army and then take down the observer with the Vikings. If the observers are dead, the ghost can just cloak and just EMP everything. No big deal. And laugh while he does that. Another scan going down from the Muslim, looking for that observer. Sees it in the back there. Then again, splitting up his army, even blinking to try to split. Three Marauders stemming forward to try to take care of one Stalker. He stays alive. Vikings coming forward as well. One High Templar meandering his way forward. Oh, nice volley there. From the Muslim taking down that one Colossus. The Muslim going to try to engage here. High Templar coming forward. Nice storm there onto the Marine Marauder army. By Minigun. EMP is laying down onto those High Templars. But again, decent storms. And Minigun making those Archons from those High Templars. But does the Muslim have too much? I think he does. The Muslim now 147 to 100 supply. Only Archons remain. A couple Zealots and Stalkers as well. But if Minigun can take down these Vikings. And remake some Colossi, oopsie daisies. If we can t take down the Vikings and remake some Colossi. But look at this, his minerals and gas are so low. Um, more EMPs going down, the Archon's completely melting. And there goes Minigun's army. And there is the GG and the good luck from Minigun. If you are a Chad Jones fan, do not be upset. Do not be upset because there is a lower bracket and he's going to be participating in that.